Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 11 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model a dog bowl. We'll take another look at the revolve feature, and you'll also learn how to set constraints, lock in sketch lines, look at the section analysis, and offset and thicken surfaces in the patch workspace. To get started, we'll insert a reference image, which I've attached below in the video description. Now the reference image is half of the dog bowl because we'll use the revolve feature to create the rest of the shape. I'll select attached canvas from the insert dropdown list. I'll select the front plane, and then I'll select the image from my computer. Now I'll go ahead and rotate this around, making sure that it's right side up, and I'll also set the opacity to 15%. After clicking OK, we'll want to calibrate the image size so it's the same as our reference dimensions. I'll open the Canvases folder, right-click on the image, and select Calibrate. Then, I'll click at the left of our 100mm mark, and I'll click at the right, and I'll type in 100mm. Now after hitting enter, you'll see that the image was resized to the same dimensions as outlined on a reference image. Now before we start drawing our sketch, I'll double click on the reference image in the timeline to reopen it, and I'll click and hold on the square in the middle, which will allow me to freely drag it around. Now to make things even easier for us, we'll drag this around so the center origin of our reference image lines up with our center origin point, and then we'll click OK. At this point, we'll go ahead and start drawing the outline of the dog bowl. I'll start off by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter L to activate the line command, and I'll click on the front face. Then I'll select the origin point, and I'll drag over to the right, making this 100 millimeters long. I'll make this vertical line 2.5 millimeters, hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And then I'll create another line 10 millimeters to the left. For the next line, I'll type in 55 millimeters, hit the tab key, and then I'll type in 100 degrees for the angle. I'll hit the tab key to lock the angle in place as well, allowing me to click anywhere without throwing off the dimensions. The next line, I'll go over to the left 15 millimeters, and then this line heading downwards, I don't know the length of it but I know it's 100 degrees from the horizontal line. So I'll enter 100 degrees, hit the tab key to lock it in place, and then I'll select down here. I'll hit the escape key, and then I'll reactivate line with letter L, and I'll create the 10 millimeter vertical line from the center origin, and then I'll create the last line here, which will close off our profile shape. So you'll see that after I selected where the lines meet, the profile shape turned orange. Now this signifies that it's properly closed. Now before we start adding fillets, there are a few different things we'll want to do. First, let's go ahead and activate the trim tool by hitting letter T on the keyboard, and we'll click on the extra part of the line here so it doesn't mess up any of our fillets. And I'll hit escape to exit the trim tool. Now at this point, we'll want to add constraints to some of the lines, making sure that our overall profile shape doesn't get messed up when we go to add fillets. If we look at some of these icons and click on them, we'll see that we already have a horizontal and even some perpendicular constraints. I'll add a few more constraints by right-clicking on the line and selecting horizontal. Now before we add the fillets to this sketch, I'm going to click on the canvas's light bulb to turn off the reference image so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. I'm also going to add a dimension to this horizontal line here so it doesn't change. And then I'll activate fillet from the sketch dropdown menu. I'll select the first corner, type in five millimeters, and then I'll select these top two corners. You'll notice as we added these fillets, it took away some of the constraints and added some tangent constraints to our sketch. I'll right click to activate fillet once again, and I'll add a fillet of two and a half millimeters to this outer lip of the bowl. Now before we exit the sketch, I'll hover over the entire sketch to select everything, 
and I'll right click and select fix slash unfix. This will lock all the lines of the sketch in place, ensuring that we don't accidentally move any of the lines or change any of the dimensions as we continue to work. Now you'll see that some Fusion users like to fix lines one by one as they draw them, and others like to do entire sketches at once. Now it really just depends on your workflow and personal preference, but either way it comes in handy, especially if you're going to be working on the same file with someone else. We'll go ahead and stop the sketch, and then I'll activate the Revolve tool from the Create drop-down menu. We'll select the profile sketch we created, and we'll select the center origin line for the axis. I'll change the operation to New Component, and I'll click OK. Now that we have the overall shape of the dog bowl, we'll need to make the bottom hollow. To do this, I'll activate the Shell tool from the Modify drop-down list, and I'll click on the bottom plane and type in 2.5 millimeters for the thickness. And you'll see that after we click OK, we've created this nice dog bowl shape. Now sometimes when creating models, you'll want to take a look at the inside to make sure that things are how they should be. Now I want to double check here that this bottom surface is raised off the ground, so I'll select Section Analysis from the Inspect drop-down menu. I'll click on the YZ plane, and then I'll hit OK. You'll see now we can take a look at the overall shape that we've created after revolving it. And if we go over to the Analysis folder, we can toggle this on and off whenever we need it. Now the last thing we'll want to do is create a rubber band that fits around the bottom of the bowl here, making sure that our dog bowl doesn't scratch any nice wood floors. So before we do this, I'm going to fillet the edges of this outer lip, making sure they're not sharp. I'll hit letter F on the keyboard to select Fillet, and then I'll select the top and bottom lines and I'll type in one millimeter and click OK. Now to create the rubber banding, we'll go to the patch workspace and I'm going to use the offset tool from the create dropdown list. Then I'll select the dog bowl as the surface. I'll type in 0.2 millimeters for the offset distance and I'll set the operation to new component and click OK. Now it's a little bit hard to see what we just did here, so I'm going to rename the components. I'll double click and make the first one Dog Bowl, and I'll name the second one Rubber. I'm also going to right click on the rubber, select Appearance, and I'll drag and drop a soft rubber onto the rubber component. Now if I toggle the rubber component on and off, you'll see that we have our Dog Bowl and we have our rubber but we obviously don't want the rubber to cover the entire surface, so we'll have to trim some of it away. So I'll create a new sketch off the bottom plane, and I'll hit letter C on the keyboard for center circle. I'll click on the center origin, drag out, and I'll type in 185 millimeters for the distance. Then I'll hit letter E for extrude, and we'll need to select the circle we just created and drag the arrow up. Now we can select two object from the extent menu and select the top of our dog bowl. That way we're not cutting any further than necessary. Then I'll toggle the objects to cut folder and we'll unselect the dog bowl. So you see this is one reason it's a good habit to rename your components and bodies. It will make it a lot easier to select the right thing when using certain tools in Fusion. Let's click OK and take a look at the result. Now if we take a look at the section analysis again, we'll see that the rubber band isn't very thick. So I'll select Thicken from the Create drop-down menu, click on the rubber band, and I'll make this 1.5 millimeters thick. Now we have a nice protective rubber band around the bottom of our dog bowl. The last thing I'll do here is add the appearance of stainless steel by right-clicking on the bowl component and I'll drag and drop polished stainless steel onto the dog bowl. Then I'll also have to reapply the soft rubber to our banding here because the thickened tool created a new body so we lost the appearance we previously had. Lastly, as just a heads up, tomorrow I'll be kicking off a new series called Fusion Fridays where I'll be releasing short videos every single Friday.
Now these videos will be covering many different tips and tricks in Fusion 360, helping you become more proficient. Thanks for watching. Be sure to ask your questions in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.